Elon Musk, the chief executive of Tesla and SpaceX, is now the world's richest person. An increase in Tesla's share price on Thursday pushed Mr. Musk past Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon. The SpaceX founder and CEO is now worth more than $200 billion, thanks to the ongoing surge in the stock price of his electric car company, Tesla. Musk who began 2020 with $27 billion, then padded his pocketbook in historic fashion during the year. Tesla's rocketing share price, which has increased more than ninefold over the past, added more than $150 billion to his net worth. As of 9th January, the company's market value has grown to more than $800 billion. How strange, Musk tweeted in response to the news. Well, back to work, he added. In an interview with Axel Springer CEO Matthias Doppner, last month, Musk said that he aims to dedicate as much money as he can to colonize Mars, and he's selling most of his material possessions in the process. In a 2018 tweet, Musk wrote, about half my money is intended to help problems on Earth and half to help establish a self-sustaining city on Mars to ensure the continuation of the life of all species in case Earth gets hit by a meteor or World War III happens and we destroy ourselves. Musk also wants to know how he can put his riches to good use. He wrote, critical feedback is always super appreciated, as well as ways to donate money that really make a difference. Over the next few months, China is planning to launch three big missions to begin the construction phase of the country's space station project. The China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology is finalizing work on rockets, which will launch the first space station module, a cargo and refueling craft, and a crewed mission to space. The first hardware, scheduled to take flight in a couple of months, is the core module of the station, known as Tian, which will provide astronauts with living space and life support and contain the power and propulsion components of the outpost. The launch will be the first of the 11 scheduled missions to build a three-module Chinese space station. The Chinese space station, known as Jiangong, is expected to be completed and will enter regular operations in 2022. It will operate at an inclination of 42 to 43 degrees, at about 340 to 450 kilometers above the Earth. Tian, which is 18 meters in length and weighs about 22,000 kilograms, will be launched from the Wenchang Satellite Launch Center, atop a long March 5B rocket. Once in orbit, the Tian module will be visited by the Tianzhou 2 cargo spacecraft. This will be launched on a long March 7 rocket. Tianzhou cargo spacecraft has a mass of 12,000 kg and differing pressurized and unpressurized variants. This will be followed by the Shenzhou-12 crewed mission. The mission will be launched atop a long March 2F rocket and will be China's first crewed mission since 2016. The identity of the crew will likely remain secret until days or weeks before launch. The astronauts are expected to carry out several extravehicular activities during the mission. The Shenzhou-12 spacecraft will feature an improved guidance, navigation and control system to meet new mission demands. No clear schedule for the launches has been published yet by the Chinese government. A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket thundered into space from Cape Canaveral and deployed a Turkish communications satellite Thursday night. This is the first of more than 40 Falcon rocket missions scheduled this year from launch pads in Florida and California. After arcing due east from Cape Canaveral, the Falcon 9 shed its first stage booster about two and a half minutes into the flight, before beginning its descent toward a SpaceX drone ship parked around 650 kilometers east of Cape Canaveral in the Atlantic Ocean. The Falcon 9 booster nailed its landing on the drone ship in the Atlantic about eight and a half minutes after liftoff, completing the reusable rocket's fourth trip to space and back. Meanwhile, the Falcon 9's upper stage performed two engine burns before releasing the Turksat 5A spacecraft into an elliptical supersynchronous transfer orbit, about 33 minutes after liftoff. Turkish officials confirmed Thursday night that ground teams received the first radio signals from the satellite, allowing controllers to begin health verifications and post-launch checkouts. The spacecraft is designed to operate for approximately 30 years, providing broadband coverage to Turkey, the Middle East, Europe, and portions of Africa. NASA has big hopes for 2021, with one of its primary goals to launch Artemis 1, an uncrewed moon mission. The mission is meant to show that the Orion spacecraft and Space Launch System rocket are ready to send humans to our lunar neighbor. NASA is nearing the end of the Green Run test series that puts the core stage of the rocket through its paces before it actually launches off in the future. 
NASA conducted the seventh test of the Green Run test series, known as the Wet Dress Rehearsal, on December 20 at NASA's Stennis Space Center. The test marked the first time cryogenic propellant was fully loaded into and drained from the core stage's two immense tanks. The wet dress rehearsal provided structural and environmental data, verified the cryogenic storage capabilities, demonstrated software with the stage's flight computers and avionics, and conducted functional checks of all the systems. The eighth and final part of the test series could happen as soon as January 17, when NASA initiates an exciting hot fire. The upcoming hot fire test will fire all four of the stage's RS-25 engines simultaneously for up to eight minutes to simulate the core stage's performance during launch. After the firing at Stennis, the core stage will be refurbished and shipped to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The stage will then be assembled with the other parts of the rocket and NASA's Orion spacecraft in preparation for Artemis 1 mission. The mission is the first integrated flight of SLS and Orion, and the first mission of the agency's Artemis program. NASA's Lucy mission is one step closer to launch, as the Lucy thermal emission spectrometer has successfully integrated into the spacecraft. Slated to launch in October 2021, NASA's Lucy mission will be the first space mission to study the Trojan asteroids. Trojan asteroids are the leftover building blocks of the solar system's outer planets, orbiting the Sun at the distance of Jupiter. The Lucy mission will revolutionize our knowledge of planetary origins and the birth of our solar system. The newly installed L-TESS spectrometer, developed by a team at Arizona State University, is effectively a remote thermometer. It will measure the far infrared energy emitted by the Trojan asteroids as the Lucy spacecraft flies by these objects. It will also collect spectral information using thermal infrared observations in the wavelength range from 4 to 50 micrometers. LTES joined Lucy's higher-resolution camera, LLORI, built by the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, which was installed in early November. Lucy's remaining scientific instrument, LRALF, the mission's color imaging camera and infrared spectrometer, is scheduled to be delivered in early 2021. Lucy will be launched atop an Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral on October of this year. Built by Lockheed Martin, Lucy is the 13th mission in NASA's Discovery program. The spacecraft is expected to operate for about 12 years. Now, let's discuss some of the major SpaceX Starship updates from the past week. The company placed Starship Serial No. 9 through its first triple Raptor static fire test on January 6. The vehicle's three engines lit up for about one second on Wednesday during the test at SpaceX's South Texas facilities. The test was extremely short relative to all previous nominal Raptor static fires. It may have been either a post-ignition abort or shortened deliberately to avoid damaging the pad's concrete surface. After the Wednesday's test, SpaceX planned for a second static fire test on Friday, which was aborted for unknown reasons. In the meantime, SpaceX fully scrapped the wreckage of Starship Serial No. 8, clearing the landing zone for the imminent launch debut of its successor. The workers also repaired the Starship landing pad, which got damaged by the explosion of SN8. With landing pad cleared and SN8's impact crater repaired, the only thing standing between Starship SN9 and its launch debut is the second Triple Raptor static fire test. A recent public notice from Cameron County ordered a temporary closure of State Highway 4 and Boca Chica Beach from January 11 to 13. SpaceX will attempt the next triple engine static fire during one of these days and will conduct the high altitude test flight of SN9 later this week. According to Elon Musk, SpaceX will pressurize SN9's header tanks with helium for this flight, which should prevent them from losing pressure, like the methane header tank did during SN8's flight. A recent temporary flight restrictions from the FAA indicates that the apogee of SN9 is set to unlimited, hinting that serial number 9 may fly to an altitude higher than 12.5 kilometers. Earlier this week, the Federal Aviation Administration asked the public to weigh in on SpaceX's request to expand its launch and testing facility in South Texas. In June 2020, FAA decided to conduct an environmental assessment to determine whether these expanded tests and launch activities are harmful to area wildlife, the environment and the public living nearby. This came after many environmentalists and residents expressed concern following several failed launch attempts and fiery explosions at the facility. Recently the FAA requests public comments on potential alternatives and impacts. 
but some environmentalists worry the request is coming too late in the agency's ongoing environmental assessment process. Moving on to other Starship prototypes, Starship SN10 is now fully stacked inside the high bay and is waiting for its aft fin installation. Starship serial number 11 and 12 are now inside the midbay, under construction. Serial number 11 is stacked to the usual full level and is waiting for its nose cone assembly. Meanwhile, SN12 has its aft dome and engine skirt assembled. Now, let's take a look at the latest changes to remaining Starship prototypes over the past week, with the help of this illustration from Brendan Lewis. The oxygen tank midsection and common dome of serial number 15 got stacked together last week. The common dome serves as the top of the oxygen tank and bottom of the methane tank. The oxygen tank midsection and the forward dome of serial number 16 was spotted at the construction site last week. The forward dome section of the latest Starship prototype, serial number 17, is now sleeved and readied for stacking. The forward dome acts as the roof of the methane tank. The methane header tank of SN17, which stores fuel for landing burn, was also spotted at the worksite last week. Watch our previous video to get updates about the remaining Starship prototypes. Link in the description. With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.